Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the dance. The party's just wrapping up here. Everyone's going home after a long day of dancing and festivities. Here at the Windmill Village, where... Neo Holland's Gundam Fighter is probably hiding nearby trying to peacefully skate his way to the finals. Uh, don't worry, they're not as peaceful as they seem. Also, if I sound a little congested, I am. Uh, I've had a little bronchitis flare up. Yeah, these dancers, they are not peaceful. Even though they don't attack you on sight, uh, they do flay people alive here. Proper people sue connoisseurs. Just like our friend the Godskin Apostle. Uh, one of the things that they drop are human bone shards and one of their three unique celebrant weapons uh, is a sickle made out of human bone. There's also a rake made out of human bone and a cleaver that, you guessed it, is made out of human bones. Now we have a giant rat friend. Uh, so what were they celebrating? Who knows? Oh, hello. Kind of ran right into him. He does not have the range to keep up, though. I don't know. Maybe they were just hit by a dancing plague. Uh, like the one that hit France in the 1500s. That's the most famous one. There were outbreaks of it as early as, I think, the 12 and the 1300s. Choreomania is another word for it, or St. John's Dance. In fact, I think there were some outbra outbreaks in the wake of the plague. And folks at the time, uh, as you can you, no doubt guess, were not playing games with that. They quarantined the dancers. They tried to exercise them at one point. There's a theory that it's caused... Uh, by a fungus that grows on rye bread called ergot. And the delirious dancing is ergot poisoning. But I remember I read a while back an excerpt from The Lancet that says it's unlikely that someone with ergot poisoning could dance for days at a time. Also, they've, de they've decorated all the crucifixes. How cute, how lovely, very festive. There's also a disease called Sidenham Chorea, which causes uh, twitches and tremors, but that doesn't really line up with what happened during these dancing epidemics. And then there are less substantiated theories, uh, st like it being mass psychogenic illness or mass delusion resulting from all the extreme stress caused by like all the wars and the plagues at the time. At the time, uh, people thought it was possession by angry saints, hence St. John's Dance, and also uh, St. Vitus, who's the patron saint of dancing. St. Vitus Dance uh, is also another name for Sidenham Coria, I read. One fun theory that I read is that a dancing cult caused it. Like, the whole phenomenon. Oh, God! This might be bad. Also, I think they skinned that dog. Woo! That was... I almost... Almost got away. That is a nasty-looking rake. Okay, we got that back. I... I'm going to try not to get jumped like it's Jujutsu Kaisen again. Oh, nothing. Oh, wait. Stormhawk vet. Oh, hello. Y'all got a dog on the roof. Oh, the now they're mad. Led by their pack leader, Skinless Dog.
And as we climb to the top of the windmill, or the top of the hill, it's another one of these. Not nearly as tough as the one that we fought underneath the Divine Tower of Kaelid. Plus, we already have all that experience fighting that one. Oh, I just realized this is the pilot for Neo Holland. We're challenging him to a Gundam fight match. And the Gundam that he's piloting is the god that he skinned. It's like a flesh mech. I'm gonna get hit. Eh, it doesn't matter. Perfect range. Even a little bit further than I needed to go, actually. Yeah, we got the privilege of hearing that song again, too. And we got the Godskin Peeler and Scouring Black Flame. I'll talk more about the song in a second. I just want to read this. Unique twin blade wielded by Godskin Apostles, characterized by its disturbing design. One end features a sickle for slicing attacks, while the other boasts a winding spike for boring into flesh. Much skill is required to wield this weapon due to its asymmetric nature. We also got this twin knight sword. So we have two new twin blades. I think we just got that twin knight sword from a drop earlier. Uh, yeah, so that song. That song uh, was composed by Tai Tomasawa, who is one of the absolute MVPs of this soundtrack. He also did a song for a later boss that I also really love. Uh, I think he did two of my three favorite tracks. There is also on the soundtrack uh, composing, there's Tsukasa Saito, Yoshimi Kudo, uh, of course, Yuka Kitamura, who sadly left FromSoft this year, uh, earlier this year. But there's, there's clearly an overwhelming amount of talent in From's music department, so her departure is going to be felt, but it's not going to leave like an unfillable void. That plus, I think she's just going freelance, so... We might still hear more of her work in the future. Uh, in, in future From games, I mean, specifically. There's also uh, Shoei Miyazawa, who's worked in From Sound Department for a while, and just made his debut as a composer in this game. And I mentioned having a top three of boss themes. Uh, Miyazawa is responsible for my other favorite for another late game fight. Now, we're just going to take a small detour to get another somber bell bearing. Uh, this one's going to be the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 2. Uh, and here, early into the tunnel, we're going to grab the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 2. And that'll let us buy smithing stones 3 and 4 with runes, letting us level regular weapons up to plus 12. Next, I'm going to be heading back to the top of the Grand Lift. Okay, I think we're going to veer off to the left now, and we're going to head to... Uh, we're going to head towards the cliff, and then we are going to uh, jump from the Lux Ruins... And we're going to do that because there is an Erdtree sapling with another golden seed waiting for us, but also there's a character gazing out over the hill, looking uh, out over the Altus Plateau. So this should be Lux. There's nothing too consequent. String! Yay! Can never have enough string. Oh no! I'll have to remember to come back for that. Not our primary objective, though. I would like to find the safe spot to jump before I start getting beat up. This should do it. 
And yeah. I was a little nervous when I missed the uh, the ledge I was aiming for that I was going to take a bunch of fall damage because you never know. No problem. I think this is the Urtree uh, Gazing Hill. Come on, roll away. Aw. Aw, yeah! I love when they do that. It's Millicent. Meet again. In truth, it's been smooth sailing for me. The scarlet rot has stilled since last we met. As such, I've been able to continue my journey. Though rather vexingly, I realized that if I still had my sword arm, I could have aided you in battle. Now I'm tracing the path Melania took after unleashing the power of the scarlet rot during her battle with General Radan in the Caled Wilds. I should like to meet her. This vanished woman. I think she's in the north, in the lands that lie beyond the Erd Tree. In the north, in the lands that lie beyond the Erd Tree, of which there is a lot of land. Now, she's passed into... So she is tracing the path Melania took, and she is down one sword arm. Otherwise, would be able to render assistance to us in boss fights. Which ones? Well, we'll find that out in the future. First, we're going to have to find a prosthetic for her. And don't mind if I do. Pick up Bloodblade. Oh, there's Crab. Crab is not shrimp. Crab cannot snipe. Crab does not have the AWP. Oh, it's one of these. That spits a mist. Oh, giant. Okay. You were the distraction. And you're a little bit stuck. Two of them. Get back here. Get back here. I don't want these projectiles, too. Okay. And dismount me. This is okay. I have a few iframes from this. And they're being timid. That enemy type... We should have first met it, met in Lyernia. It managed to elude us somehow. Okay, we're going to... Uh, oh, no, not that one. Next, we're going to be heading out to do another assassination mission for uh, Tanith and the Recusants in Volcano Manor. This one is going to be for uh, Raleigh the Idol. Let's switch to this staff and set up. Oh yeah, he's got the crossbow. Oh, and my equip load is a problem. Right, shit. Yeah, he's got the Scarlet Rock crossbow. It's like the, uh, the assassin from... Oh, no! Oh, God. This is bad. I might still make it out of this, but... Yeah, that was two things going wrong at once. Uh, getting stuck on the rock and also forgetting to account for the equip load penalty. This time, I'm just rushing him down. Oh, this may... have been a mistake. Okay, he can't shoot me fast enough to stop me from glug lugging. Ow. Damn, he's so nimble. 
It's like he's moving at light speed. <laughs> oh no, that didn't finish him. I was happy to take one to give one, but... Well, I have more flasks than him, so... Bye! Bing bing! I love ending a fight that way. It feels so disrespectful. Crepus's Vile, which I think is a taunt, uh, uh, talisman? Or no, that's, uh, that's Shabriri's Woe. What is Crepus's Vile? It's a resistance talisman, I believe. Dark mist sealed within. Eliminates all sound made by the wearer. Ah, it's stealth one. Ritual implement used by round table hold assassins. There was a time when Tarnished, who had strayed from guidance, feared nothing more than utter silence. And since we are on this lowland path anyway, we can actually come down here to the Shaded Castle, secluded and remote from everything else in the Office Plateau. In a rotting swamp. Just a little swamp. It's just a little one. Foundations? Never heard of them. We'll build this castle on a swamp, no problem. If the old Iron King gets to build his uh, on a lake of lava in a volcano, I have to finish this very fast. Because uh, otherwise the troll is going to jump me. Thank you for that. Woo! Just in time. Also not a troll. It's a big golem. God, I don't like that fire attack. Mirai Mask, Mirai Robe, and the Antspur Rapier. Just want to make sure I'm out of danger before I head inside. I love her mask, by the way, or their mask. Come on. Starlight Shards, a couple more. There it is. Yeah, that's a great look. And it goes well with what I'm already wearing. All right, let's find a way inside. Uh, as far as I know, there are actually a couple of ways to get up on the wall and over it. So we'll just trace a path along the wall until we find one of them. Like this one. So the Barai family were executioners uh, for generations. That family were also uh, Castellans for generations. Castellans being like governors of ca uh, governors for castles and the surrounding lands. And the mask is supposed to have been made in the image of the very first of the Mirai lineage. Uh, secondly, the men in the family were all born ill. And also, the one who just invaded us uh, was particularly smitten with Melania, who they call a fierce goddess born into rot. Also explains the Antspur Rapier, which is a rapier capable of inflicting scarlet rot. This also just so happens to be the place where we're going to get Millicent's prosthetic arm. So we'll progress her quest. We're also going to learn a little bit more about Melania and the Scarlet Rot while we're here. First, gotta make it inside through the Poison Swamp. Given that this is just poison, though, not Scarlet Rot, not too big of a deal. We can also avoid pretty much all of it. 
Uh, if you're careful, you never really have to get poisoned in here. Plus, wow, that's a lot of budding cave moss from one enemy. From one pickup. Also, once we get deeper in, we will find a bonfire. Ooh, should have known that was coming. Eventually, your judgment is going to lapse. Eventually, one corner, you're just not going to be cautious. It's going to catch you. It's going to be the one. That's what I love about it. It's such a simple old trap. But like, if you are, if you aren't focused for just one second, it's a deadly trap, even if it is simple and uh, very obvious. There are just too many corners to always be focused. Ah, oh, perfumers. Pretty close. Ooh! But they've got that shotgun. You always have to be a little bit worried about them. Not to mention, I forgot that he could have pulled out the triple crossbow. Opened up point blank on me. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of these stony outcroppings too. Oh, another one of these. Oh, okay. I thought it wasn't going to reach. I thought I was low profiling it. Could have just angled it down if I unlocked though, I think. All right, let's see what lies deeper in the castle. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. These enemies, they're so frail and gaunt, we can just roll into them to push them around. So we never really have to worry too bad about getting swarmed by them. Because even if we're totally surrounded, we can just push them off us. Do you have to worry about getting grabbed? And I guess that that is a respectable amount of damage. Get hit by two or three of them in a row, they'll actually poison. Oh yeah! Oh, that's good. Two at once, back to back. And then what's this? A clean rot knight hanging out here. One of Melania's. Are we? Wow! Wow. And she is guarding the Valkyrie's prosthesis, which is the arm that we need to go give to Millicent. Golden prosthesis once used by the one-armed Valkyrie, a masterwork of craftsmanship with practice and skill it can be used as proficiently as a real arm. When Malay Marai, Lord of the Shaded Castle, embraced this prosthesis, he claimed to feel the presence of his personal goddess. So we will give that to Millicent just as soon as we're finished up with the Shaded Castle. We still have a little bit of business here. Uh, for one, there's still a boss fight to do here. Very much doubt. Yeah, no. Uh, now, from here, uh, I think I'm going to jump down anyway. That one, thankfully, didn't aggro. And we can 
can go up there. We can go grab this real quick. Uh, also, should probably clear the rest of these out so they don't fire at me while I try to climb. Ugh. Let me onto solid ground, please. I beg. Uh, we can also check. Wait, is this the way I came? We've gotten a little bit turned around since going upstairs. This is also something a little new. Ooh! I think I saw an item by the grave. Just, just a little rune. Oh, and we are starting to get surrounded in a place where I can't move very quick. Now we don't have to worry about getting fired at while we make this slow climb up. And there are more perfumers. There are two actually here. Which is really annoying to have to fight. Ugh. Okay, that was worth it. We got one down already. Oh, I was thinking of the pages earlier with the crossbows. Yeah, these ones, they're just regular perfumers. They're annoying, but not as lethal. Just gotta close the distance without getting burnt. Or at least without getting killed. Oh, hi. Just throwing out combos of them, huh? So we got some Miranda powder that they use. I think up here this might be some perfume bottles. Yeah. So now we can cosplay them if we want. Except I don't know if we have any... Did we get the perfumer gear? I don't remember. I don't usually wear it. So it just kind of languishes in the inventory. It belongs in the box. Like hundreds and hundreds of Pokemon before it. When Pokemon are in their Pokeballs, are they asleep are they in some kind of suspended animation? Stasis? Are they conscious? Uh, this has the potential to get nasty. Nah, okay. This, on the other hand, sucks. <laughs> oh, hi. Do your flailing bullshit down here, please. Ugh. This is okay. This is very okay. He landed on my attack. And I think that's perfect. I don't think we have anything else scary to worry about. Okay, I was waiting to be proven wrong. Very appropriate grease to get here. And then that clears it, I think. Why are they so peaceful? Hmm. Don't like that. Okay, we are getting very close to the boss. I want to say this is the last bonfire. Oh no, I'm mistaken, I think. I 
think this is second to last, unless this is a hallway at the end of this corridor. Oh no, still a little bit to go. I was misremembering. House Mariah is ruined. Just desserts for falling for that severed harpy. No surprise that guilty cretin took the castle and our storied sword. That guilty cretin took the castle and our storied sword. Who could this be? Bonk, bonk. I suppose we will go find out. Ah! Oh, these are just tarnished undead nobles. Oh, there's a page. Yeah, there's a scary guy. Ah. Must not give him a chance. Oh, we got a hood. And our reward for facing that danger is a perf perfumer's cookbook. So we can learn to make their Molotovs. That's not the perfumer's cookbook. That's the anarchist cookbook. Ooh, hello. Twice that didn't work out. is not an ideal place to be fighting you, especially since you're getting stuck on the stairs. Are you kidding me? Wow. I've done so much farming for for clean rot gear on other characters, and it's obnoxious to get. I think there is another one waiting around the corner. <laughs> Hello. Jump scare noble. Oh, I hear the bad sound. Is that the one? Or is that just a... That's just a regular... No, it's not. You must die. You must go. Few enemies inspire that level of alarm in me. Ah. Dog, 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 dog. Okay. Oh, dog, dog, dogs. Castle's got those dogs in it. Okay. We are safe, I think. Safe enough to proceed. And this elevator will take us to the end of the Shaded Castle.
So, who was the Cretan who came over and took over the castle? And took their famous sword? Elmer of the Briar, a bell-bearing hunter. Oops. Mistimed my parry. And now... Ah! Wow, I got perfected. Seven golden letters. No, it's seven red letters. You died. And this room has a big portrait of Melania hanging in the back. Wow, this is going so wrong. Jesus, no wonder he was able to take over the castle. That's how we like to start. Now let's see the second one, because we need that for the critical. Very nice. Oh, hell yeah. Is that it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Couple parries and that's it. There's their sword, the Mariah Executioner's sword. And yeah, what else is in this room? Racks and racks of clean raw armor. Can I please get some? The drop rate is abysmal. And that big portrait of Melania with her flowing red hair. Inherited from Radagon. Oh, and there's also the ant spur rapier I forgot about. Uh, there it is. Spur of an, a giant ant, which has been fashioned into a rapier. The blade drips with scarlet rot. Scarlet rot's an old legend of which Malamari of the Shaded Castle was a private believer. And indeed, he eventually found his own personal goddess. Storied sword of House Mirai, family of executioners who presided over the castle. One of the legendary armaments, Elmer of the Briar, the bell-bearing hunter, snatched the sword from the site of his looming execution and furnished it with battle skills from his home of Aeacade. Aeacade's dancing blade is the name of the of the uh, weapon art. Great shield from a foreign land used by Elmer of the Briar attacks with this armament utilize the iron thorns that have been wound around its frame. Originates from Aeacid, a land prou of proudly solitary ascetics. So, with that, that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.